you have to forgive me, my voice is failing, but uh, fortunately, I was fortunate to pick up uh, Miss Maddie Smith so that we could have yeah. Miss Maddie Smith <clears throat> is an extraordinary person, and we have a, a she's, she's, she's really special to me because it makes it possible for me to follow that fantastic person that came before us. I mean, was that incredible? Yeah. This is wonderful. <laughs> I want to be a little bit serious for just a moment, please. Uh, this is about an experiment that Dean came and started 25 years ago. I've been involved in FIRST for 19 years. Uh, <laughs> Annie, Annie Smith's been involved since she was 10 years old. <laughs> but 25 years ago, Dean started in a uh, gymnasium with 35 young people just like you. And I, I'm talking to the mentors, but I'm more importantly talking to each of you who are participating in FIRST. Because your life goes by quickly. I'm 71 years old. When I was your age, I thought I'd never, I thought I'd never die. I thought it all go on forever. Well, it doesn't. And you have to pass it along. And so, 25 years ago, Dean decided by himself that he was going to make a difference in the world. That he was going to change your lives and all of our lives and give us a chance. <clears throat> Forgive me, my voice was just almost gone from talking over the noise for the last <coughs> yesterday. But in the end, uh, first starts with these with these 35 kids, and here we are 25 years later in 63 countries with tens of thousands, in fact hundreds of thousands, of young people just like you all around the world, all making a difference. When I first started, the first 19 years ago, for the first 10 years, we only had 12 students in the state of Oklahoma on one team in Ponca City that was that was provided by the, by the energy of one person, Miss Tanya Scott. I'd like to just uh, applaud for Tanya Scott. She's out here. But, but for Tanya Scott, none of you would be here. <laughs> and the reason is. When I first became, uh, I met Dean at the TED conferences 19 years ago. He invited me to be a national judge. I wore these shirts for 10 years and judge nationals. This is the first time I've had one on since I met Waz nine years ago. <clears throat> the, the opportunity that's presented to each of you uh, started with Tanya because she tackled me at the national finals and said, I'm from Ponca City, Oklahoma, and we need a regional. And out of that, Out of that, uh, I got my friend Mickey Clagg, I got Burns Hargis, I got Dr. Reed. We all got together, and somehow it's come to pass. <laughs> in 1989, my friend George Gilder uh, wrote a sentence. He, he predicted the future, and he summarized it. And he said, in, in, a, in, a, in a beautiful English sentence, and then collapsing the computer to invisibility, and embedding it in the matter of everyday life, Man may at last impregnate the world with his mind and awaken it to the sound of his master's voice. Now, if there's a better sentence, tell me what it is. By collapsing the computer to invisibility and embedding it in the matter of everyday life, man may at last awaken, man may at last impregnate the world with his mind and awaken it to the sound of his master's voice. <clears throat> in, at the turn of the last century, a young man named Thomas Edison did not invent the light bulb, as most people think, but he actually <clears throat> commercialized it. At the turn of, of this century, at about the same time in his life, there's a man here who started a company called Apple Computer. <clears throat> Apple, Apple is the light bulb. When you have an idea, and we want to demonstrate it, we always put a light bulb up. Well, <clears throat> we should put an Apple IIe, because, <clears throat> because that's what's going on now. And I want you to know that I knew Steve Jobs not well, but I know Steve Wozniak very well. And I've never met a nicer person. Before I introduce him, I want you to hear from, from a person, which is the reason Steve is here. I asked Steve to come and give a little keynote, maybe for 30 minutes. Uh, he gives 100 speeches a year. He gets 50 to $100,000 a piece, and whatever, it's a big number. And, and instead of doing that, he said, 
No, I'll come and spend three days with you and be a judge. So I want to... If Thomas Edison was as nice a guy as Steve Wozniak, and he were willing to come here and spend three days with you, I'm going to change this up because Maddie came through, and I, I met her yesterday, but, but I'd like to introduce, I'm going to ask you to come here, I would like to introduce to you the Thomas Edison of our age, my friend, my incandescent friend, Steve Wozniak. Okay, now, I'm gonna let Maddie quickly tell you about our experience yesterday. I met her in, in the booth. Every, every person there was terrific. She just happens to be one of the terrifics. And I'm going to ask her, I asked her yesterday, I, I said, tell me the five reasons that you're in first. And so she's going to tell you the five reasons, and then she's going to give Waz a hug, and he's going to do his act. Well, the first reason I love first is I love how it's based off of racist professionalism, meaning that it's all the teams are based off of not winning, but helping each other to win. The second reason is I also love how girls are honored here. There's no stereotypes. Everybody's welcome. The third, reason, the third reason is I love how you're constantly learning. There's always new mentors, new people to teach you new things. The fourth reason is that I also love how, um, ooh, I just forgot. <laughs> well, anyways, I would guess. It's difficult to do anything the first time. 
Each of you look at the robots that you're associated with now. For the rest of your life, you, you're going to remember this is a fun experience in your life. Much different than your classes in school and the formulas in chemistry that you learned. You're going to look back and remember that robot. And you know what? You could go to sleep 40 years from now and then wake up with an idea in your head. Oh, here's how I could make that robot a little bit better. Always be thinking about trying to make things better. That everything you do is a step to the next thing. A lot of speakers out here will say you are the future and you are the important future. You know what? Politicians of the world, country leaders, whatever they do, some people say it's good, some people say it's bad, but everything technology companies bring us moves us a step forward. So my advice to you is don't try to do the same things everyone else does that's in the books. Learn to write your own book. Learn to create. Learn to be original. Start by making jokes. Always include humor in everything you do. And I just want to urge you all to go forth and change the world. Thank you very much.